Fox weather is your Hurricane HQ. And in the eastern Pacific, we've got our first named storm of the season. We've been talking about that. We'll be keeping track of every tropical threat because we know how dangerous these systems are. A new Stanford University study drives that point home. Researchers found that the deadly toll of hurricanes may stretch years beyond the storm itself, even up to about 15 years later. And we're joined now by the lead author of that study to explain, Stanford professor Solomon Shung. Uh, professor Shung, thank you for being here with us on Fox Weather. Your study is fascinating. It shows the lingering deadly impact of hurricanes. Now, that can be more than a decade beyond the storm. A lot of what we do here is in the short term, the analysis, the forecasting of these storms. What's driving those long-term effects? Well, we're not completely sure what the exact mechanism is, but what we can see in the data is that when, you know, we study over 500 storms that have struck the United States since the 1930s. And, and ever since then, even, you know, up to the present day, when a storm hits a U.S. state, we see deaths emerging sort of gradually from the communities that have been struck uh, over the, the following 15 years. Uh, now, what's tying those deaths to the storm events themselves? That's a little bit trickier to untangle. You know, we have a couple ideas. One is that it could just be stress from having experienced the storms. But we also see, for example, infants born years later in these communities have a higher rate of mortality. So what we think is happening is, you know, there's changes to people's economic conditions. People are spending down their savings to rebuild, or maybe they have to commute farther because they have a new place they work or they had to move out. And that leads to all sorts of complications down the road with getting folks, you know, appropriate health care, seeing the doctors when they need to or making those investments. So <clears throat> we think that this is like a really important finding in particular yeah. because the number of people who are dying, you know, in the decade after a storm is like over 100 times larger than the number of people who die during the storm itself. And so this is a, like a totally different picture of who is most impacted by these storms. It's, you know, we, we pay attention to the media and the news right after the storm. It's really important to be doing that. But, you know, we have to stick with these communities for the decade after to help no rebuild question. them and help the communities that are affected. In a sense, there's this lingering halo, and it's not a good one at all. And it's very difficult to quantify that, but clearly something's going on, and that's a very important finding. I read through some of the study, and it felt a little to me like you get all kinds of different instances, like robbing Peter to pay Paul. You, you draw down uh, from your retirement to, to make repairs to your home. You don't have as much money to spend on health care, maybe a, a little bit later in, in your life. Were there all kinds of things that you discovered in this study that surprised you? How, how long has the study been happening? Uh, I mean, we've been working on this for, for many, many years. Uh, but some of the most surprising features were really just uh, how pervasive these effects are. We, we see them up and down the coast. You know, there's communities that experience a lot of hurricanes. And so you would think that they sort of, you know, have the right preparations. And in many ways, they do. They're, they're very well adapted to coping with these conditions. But nonetheless, uh, we still see these health impacts emerging in the years after. And I, I think part of the reason is because it's so hard to figure out what's going on, to see in the data that someone, you know, who's, uh, not getting to the hospital on time, it, that might be due to some sort of massive disaster in their community that happened like seven, eight years ago. So one of our theories is actually this could be due to sort of how communities rebuild. Maybe we, you know, to, for reconstruction, we have to take money out of the hospital neonatal unit to rebuild a bridge. And we don't realize that those disinvestments in sort of that public infrastructure, public health care, uh, matters until we actually arrive, you know, five years later and, and recognize that we're missing something that we wish we had. So it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. You, you have a, a finite amount of money and it, it needs to be allocated in the most effective ways. So that was my question for you. Taking the findings from this study, what are you, what are you hoping moving forward? What's, what's the goal here moving forward to apply uh, some of this information? Well, this is this is really the first study of what we hope are many. You know, this is the first time we've actually even seen this dynamic happening. I don't think anyone previously understood that Americans were so vulnerable to hurricanes. I think if you had asked people a couple years ago, people would have said, oh, yeah, like a, in a hurricane, maybe 20 people die. But now we're seeing that it's actually, you know, like 10,000 people in the following decade. So 
we think that there's going to be sort of hopefully uh, a flood of, you know, follow up analysis, trying to understand from going into hospitals and, and trying to trace out what's exactly happening. What can we do? Uh, to protect these communities and rebuild them after these events. Yeah, we'd like to we'd like to check back in. We're going to be following this. We know how traumatic tropical systems can be to cities and communities, but but what you're trying to do is make the immeasurable more measurable, and we can plan better and, and accordingly uh, in the years and decades following tropical systems. So thanks for telling us a little bit about it. That's Stanford University professor Solomon Shung. Uh, thanks for being here on Fox Weather. Thank you.